ahead and get right into it. So I encourage people to make sure you take notes because this is going to be for those that need a title today. Today's message is gone. The Living Word Matrix, if you needed a title. Did I get religious enough for you with stained glass window? The, the Living Word Matrix. Matrix, yes. You know, this is going to be, Patty will put that, our special little picture up there of the Matrix. Because this is going to be how I'm going to be drawing out of you guys and the Holy Spirit within you to expound on this. Because this is the solid stuff. This, is about, this, this house is equipping Okay, it draws you into a place where you, your keenness of hearing becomes more obvious and simplistic. So, Patty, if you'd go ahead and bring up Romans five eight, and Marcus, if you would be able to read that for me as, as Patty brings it up. Yes. So I'm just throwing the first seat out. And we'll see what happens. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, now this, for, for, to help you understand where I live, okay, uh, you remember the, the, the visitation where they came and took me, and I was in Christ Jesus. I've actually felt, the, I felt this uh, interweaving kawa moment, but I could actually sense the difference of myself and Christ. I could feel that we were one, but I also recognized I wasn't lost or swallowed up by this. I was included and in the midst of that, if you remember the story, it was like uh, when you go to the eye doctor and he goes, is this better or is this better? And you have the little flipping things, so you get clearer vision. All of a sudden, that was happening, and I was seeing clearer, and all of a sudden, I realized I went through from that experience of feeling until I went into this thing that looked like the matrix. So, Patty, if you could bring that up, the little blue picture with all there. All of a sudden, I was in, number one, I was in Christ Jesus in the first part of it. And then when I shifted, I went into the being in Christ Jesus. But this was the written word. These were actually, he is what? The living word, right? Okay, the living word who is Christ makes the written word make sense. Okay, so this is why I want to really get that back into your thoughts. So you grasp this because I, I, I for whatever reason, they, they try to, Bring me to these places so I can teach and help you experience something in your flavor and in your verbiage that makes sense to you. So today, all right, we'll look at that center little dot right there with right below where the one little blue ray goes. And that's going to be our Romans 5.8. So bring us back to that scripture, please, Patty, because I'm going to start asking questions. We are all in Christ, yes? yes. We, he is the living word, yes? yes? So he explains the written word, Yes? Okay, with that understanding, but God demonstrates, who's God? We're talking Papa, Jesus, Holy, Holy Spirit, okay? God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What does that say to you? Now, raise your hand and Marcus will pass the, the microphone around. What does that really mean to you as an individual? Bon, I know you all have something. Holy Spirit, okay, Penny, go ahead and pass that over to Penny, because I'm going to show you how, I'm going to draw you in tight with this, okay? Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you, Marcus. Grab another one. Go ahead, Penny. He loved us mm -hmm. before the foundation of the world. He yes. loved us before, yes. after, and now, and forever. Good. He, he will always love us. Right. Okay, even in our poopy mess. Even in our poopy mess. Okay, who else has something to want to share? There's another microphone here. Pass it around. Anybody? Come on. All right, Jesse's got something. Yeah. See, this is, I'm, I'm pulling on strings inside of you, if you don't mind. Yes, Jesse. Yeah, I was just going to say, so as soon as this came up, I was like, this is, <laughs> I might cry. So just That's okay, be, man. be prepared for that. It's that good. But um, this was the verse that I read when I, like, the, the reveal, like, the revelation of this was, when I became a Christian. Yes. And that was after I had grown up in the church, you know, I had, you know, prayed for salvation at seven. I had gone through, you know, years and years of youth group and yeah. Sunday school and everything else. Yeah. And I did not know what God's love was. Come on now. And <laughs> when I, like, when this became really clear to me when the Holy Spirit kind of like made this come alive. Come on, yeah. In me, like that's when I suddenly knew, oh, 
this is what the love of God is. Yes. This is what yes. actually being in relationship with God is. Yeah. This is what mm. it means to be loved by God. Yeah. And this, this, you know, this whole passage, like preceding this too. So Romans five one through like one through eight was yep. like the thing that broke me oh, because baby. I never knew after you know twenty years of growing up in church mm-hmm. at that point yeah. that I was loved. Yeah, and, and then I knew. See, there's that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. How often do people live in the church and never have a touch from God like that? I've been there. I think many folks are. I think they're still in there. I think, oh yeah, we've all been in that place. And I really feel this is that moment when God goes, oh, by the way, and then all of a sudden the revelation comes. See, that's where Jesse all of a sudden stepped into that matrix and real life happened. That's beautiful. All right, who else has something? Oh, pass it back this way, Jesse, the microphone. Oh, oh yeah, you got one. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Marcus. It's okay. In in that while we were yet sinners. Uh-huh. So if we say instead of we were yet sinners, uh-huh. let's say we were yet sinning. Yes. For me, this says get rid of that concept of God cannot be in contact with yeah. sin. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. while we were yet sinning, uh-huh. God chose to be in relationship with us from a position of love. Yeah. Knowing uh-huh. that we were sinning, uh-huh. that we were positioning ourselves in opposition to him. And yet, God said, I choose to love you regardless of any of that to the point where my son is going to choose Mm -hmm. to die to bring you into relationship with me. That's right. Beautiful, Marcus. All right. Keith. When that came up on the screen... While we were yet sinners, yep. describes uh, my my old identity. Uh huh. And uh, so, even though that was my identity, mm-hmm. God broke through that. Yes. And the lies that that had been constructed in my mind and heart mm-hmm. throughout my life. One of the things I've realized that my definition of sin uh-huh. was given to me by the world yeah. and by the church. <laughs> yeah. God's definition of sin is that I'm not I'm not acting the way He created me to be. There you go. And so that uh, that has changed everything for me. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? This, this is perfect. This is what I was hoping would, would occur today. Because it is. We come to this place where, as, as you all have said, I was, in my life, I was actively still in my sinning. And you know what? Even after that, oh, Valerie, go ahead. Jump in there. Okay. And even after that moment where I felt that wham, awakening revelation in my heart, did I suddenly shift? No, no, I didn't shift. I still kept right on like messing my britches. And it wasn't a big deal to them. Valerie. Yeah, he loves us even in our mess. Yeah. And what really hits me is that when we get this revelation yeah. of Papa's love, then Jesus said, just like we did, yeah. love your enemies as I have loved you. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Good. And that we can only do that by his grace and That's sitting right. in his lap, mm-hmm. you know, but then inviting. In fact, he's had me do this as I sit down to take communion yeah. between the bread and the cup. Uh-huh. He asked, he said, I want you to invite your enemies to the table with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's it's pretty. Um, it's like, oh, really? Uh huh. I mean, like, Putin, like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you whoever, name it. Yeah. You name them. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, and what's really cool about that is if you remember this, the message I spoke probably last spring or sometime in the summer about what happened with Elijah. Okay, you know they were in, they were all surrounded by the enemy, and the, and he said, "Open their eyes," and all of a sudden the, his servant saw all the angels. And if you remember the story that continues from that, is that they all came down, they were struck blind, and then Elijah took them for a walk into the very city of the king of Jerusalem, I think it was, and and the king goes, "Can I kill them, Father? Can I kill them?" Woo! And he goes, "No, you can't kill them. Set before them a feast." And that's what they did. They broke bread. Just like we were invited to the table. As you said, bring them to that table. They set them a table and they gave them food and drink and they party and had a good time. And what happened then? They were no longer their enemies. They went home and never came back to inflict on Israel again. So they make God in his love and grace and mercy in our lives as we allow that to happen, our choice, our enemies become our friends. Okay, very good. Very, very good. All right, so let's talk about that love. His own love towards us. So where's, where's the big one we always hear about all the time about the love? John 3.16, right? Okay, Brad, Patty, bring that up. Marcus, if you would read that for me, please. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life okay for god so loved the world this is his love it's not our definition of love it's not our flavor of love it's not how we love because you know what we're not really really good at love yet even though his love is what shed abroad in our hearts we're still learning how that works and how to experience and how to thrive in it so he they papa jesus holy spirit expressed that love and there the love and desire is that none should perish. Okay? So what's another scripture that's out in your Holy Spirit inspire us right now in this room and in, in our homes where we're watching? Inspire us another scripture that's in the matrix of love, your love. Okay? If you get one, raise your hand. We'll get the microphone to you. Okay? Judge, no, yeah, go ahead. Put it on this. Yep. Because there's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer here. Push the little button. Is it the green light? There you go. Basically, judge not lest ye be judged. Um, we love one another regardless of the color of our skins, mm -hmm. our, our ethnic background. It yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't yes. matter how we, what we think of ourselves. It's the spirit. Yes. Doesn't mean that we always condone what others do, but don't judge them because you're just as guilty as they are. God loves us all despite all of that. Yeah, thank goodness. Go ahead and push the button and it'll turn it off. So it is, it is. Who else has something to tie in with that love? Anybody else? Oh, Penny's got one. All right, pass the mic to Penny. See, I, I just love watching Holy Spirit help you connect the dots with this love, His love. All right, go ahead, Penny. Well, this is one of my favorite ones. It's in Psalm. Uh -huh. And your, you show me the path of life, uh -huh. and your presence is joy forevermore, yeah. and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Yeah. And see, he's always holding our right hand, yeah. so we are his pleasure. Yes. Yeah, amen. Go ahead and push the button when you're done. All right, who else has something? Anybody else have a scripture? That's okay. See, this is the beauty of it. See, that love, is that's what they are. They cannot separate themselves from love. They are so, it is not just an attribute, it's what they are, okay? I have attributes about my life, okay? And my attributes are not necessarily who I truly am. And when, when the church has said, well, that love is just an attribute of God, they're watering down the divine love that started this whole thing. You know, if you've watched anything of Baxter Kruger, you know, and, and he has the three chairs. I know Paul, you know, Patty did a whole thing on the three chairs and, and uh, you know, how the, the, the love, it is the core of what they are. It's not just an attribute. It is the very core. So that love is so unchangeable. 
and unending. You know, as Brandon even sang about it this morning, you know, that reckless love. They're, they're not concerned about that. They don't get offended. They don't get, you know, it's, they're just giving it freely. And if, if we, uh, in our whatever, in selfishness or whatever it is that we choose to be, uh, use it incorrectly, I'll put it that way. Are they all good? Are they Indian givers? Is God an Indian giver? Okay, good. I'm glad you understand that. I didn't, have to fill the, I didn't have to fill in the blank. God is not an Indian giver. That love will always, always, always be poured out towards you. Even if you resist it to the last breath you have, that will not change their love for you. So with that being said, that we would have eternal life. Let's go ahead and jump over to Romans 5, 6. And I like this. I want to, I'm going to see if, if you can find this. So we're talking about the love that is their love, his love. That love is described in John 3, 16. Now, Marcus, if you would read this one. For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Okay, does that kind of echo what we started with? From Romans 5, 8, when we were yet sinners? Okay, we're looking at that same concept again precept while we were still helpless okay now that's interesting helpless sinners we were we were as baxter kruger puts it and some of the others it's like this sin is a sickness it's a cancer that was coming in destroying the beautiful perfect ex expression of god's creation and as baxter puts it he said how could god allow this cancer to destroy their desire the sin all right and as i think it was marcus you said that uh, you know god he doesn't turn away from sin my gracious if he did that we'd all been toast a long time ago i go right back to genesis on that one you know people say well god can't look upon sin well let me tell you something you go back to cain and abel i think i talked about this recently did he get all uptight and, and go sideways when he knew Cain was right there, and he told Cain, hey, sin is at your door. You've got to master it. All right? And then after the, the event, what did he do? What did, and then we talked about this last week. God intervened and said, you know what? This is how it's going to be. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to protect you. And, you know, da 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 You go back and read that story yourself. I've encouraged you. But I want you to see, while we were still hopeless... Hopeless. Man, have you ever been hopeless? I have been. And it's like, I, I've burned all the stuff I've got. I don't know what else to do. I've exhausted every avenue that I've knocked in every door. And I am just sitting here and I'm like, I'm helpless. I'm hanging off the cliff and there was only a little root and it's starting to come out of the ground. And I'm screaming for help because I ain't got, I, it's not within me to be able to do this. So for a while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. What's the right time? Come on. Right now? Right now? Yeah, go, pass it around to Mike. I want to get this on Mike because I want, you to, I want you to get this. Go ahead. What's the right time? Today is the day of salvation. Good. Okay. Next. Who else has something? Penny, go ahead. I want you to get what you said. The right time is right now. Absolutely. Okay. Where, when else is the right time? Go ahead, Marcus. Before the foundation of the world. Now, can you see how this matrix works? Okay, throw that picture back up there again. Because every one of you are already inside the living matrix who is Christ Jesus, the living word. And what you just did is you pulled out another light source. And you made the connection of how the written word is made alive by the living word. All right, is there some more about what the right time is? Today is the day of visitation. How about that one? Yeah, because so many people have missed their day of visitation. Oh, you know, so many people in a religious realm say, well, you missed it. Too bad, too sad, you're toast. No, the day of visitation is today, in this moment, always being the invitation never stops marcus you have anything go ahead jump in there and oftentimes it's when you 
are ready to open your heart. That's right. And why is that? Why is that? Come on, there's a scripture. You could think. Okay, say what you said again. I'm going to start pulling on you guys. And oftentimes, the right time is yes. when you are ready <laughs> to open your heart. Yes. Okay, now, where's the scripture that goes with that? Come on. What does Jesus say he does? He draws all men unto himself. See, the invitation never stops. And then finally we come to that place where it's like, I'm ready to open my heart. Bam. That's, can you see another light show up there with a connection? See, I'm showing you the living word inside of those words on a paper. He's always speaking. That was good, Marcus. You got a good one. Okay, anybody else got something to, to add to that? Because, man, you're right. Penny, go for it. We're right in the middle of this. I'm getting excited. I don't know much all. <laughs> well, in the Bible, it says somewhere, we're covered by his blood. Yes, we are. And I remember that's when it took a transition in me. I was prophesied over. Yeah. And it was like Jesus looking in my eyes, and he, she said, you are covered by his blood. It doesn't yes. matter what you've done. Exactly. Beautiful. Woo! Yes. See, that's the draw. Holy Spirit, she is always drawing. Christ is always drawing you. Papa's always got his arms. That reckless love is just, man, come on. Come on in. Come on in. That invitation, if they, if they had chose to love us and we were still helpless and living and choosing sin every day, bam! That draw never has stopped. That is the hope that we get to share when those people, they ask us why we have hope. This is our hope. This is our living hope. Our living hope is being in the living Word of God. That's the right time. Marcus, go for it. Yeah. Patty, can you bring up the Scripture on the screen again, please? Yeah, the one we just had. Yes. There it is. And I'd like to go to a different word. Oh. Because even though, Mike, you're talking about the right time, uh -huh. there's more in that Scripture I'd like to address. Good. Because... You started out by saying the living word, who is Christ, makes the written word make sense. Yes. So I want to add a piece to this particular um, verse. Good. For while we were still helpless. Yes. We are no longer helpless because we are now empowered yes. by the Holy Spirit who resides within us. Yes. Yeah, somebody shout amen to that. That's good. Yeah. So many times we were told that we were still these old worthless worms and un un you know, no, we're not helpless. Yes, Valerie. Okay, in 1 Corinthians 1.30, and I believe it. it's the passion. Okay. It's, for it is not from man we, that we draw our life, uh -huh. but from God as we are being jo joined to Jesus, the mm. anointed one. And now he is our God-given wisdom, our virtue, our holiness, and our redemption. Yeah, yeah, very good. You guys are good at this. <laughs> Man, you're tapping right in. Anybody else? I don't want to. Oh, yeah, Brandon. Brandon's got to say enough. Okay, we're good. You guys are doing awesome. I love preaching like this. <laughs> so this is something that just is coming up more about the overall theme. Yeah. Um, rather than individual words. Uh-huh. Um, you don't get mad at a fire hydrant for not being a traffic stop. There you go. Right. Right. In the same way that when you understand the way of someone else's being, mm -hmm. as, you know, just how they're showing up, how they're consistent, when you gain a deeper understanding mm -hmm. about why they are the way that they are. Differences that would have sparked controversy feel less important. Yes. Kind of like when you're reading a story mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, the, the villain drops his backstory and like, oh, he was abused as a child and now he's a sympathetic figure, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, now I can understand this villain and he makes more sense. And, oh, he was just misunderstood or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if we can gain a level 
of understanding in our limited ability to perceive somebody else. Yes. How much more perfect understanding does God have about where we're at? Come on now, that'll preach. <laughs> That's good. Keep going. So if God understands that, if he understands the reasons behind the way of our being, yes, and that he understands the reasons behind why the way of our being is not matching the truth of our being. Yes. Why would he get mad about it? Come on. That's beautiful. Why would, why would he be upset <laughs> if he understands something that we definitively don't understand? Yeah. And in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. unless we're either completely or perfectly informed... We don't have yeah. the necessary information or maybe not even access to the power to change that. Ooh, that's good. So yeah. really, while we were still sinners or helpless yes. at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Why? Because we couldn't die for ourselves. There you go. Yeah. And Christ didn't judge us mm -hmm. for the way of our being not matching the truth of our being. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful, Brandon. Wow. You guys have got this, the reason for your hope. Good. Holy Spirit's inspiring. Oh, yes, there's more. <laughs> yes, Penny, go for it. Somewhere in, <laughs> I read this in, in the Old Testament. That's all right. Jesus, or the Lord is full of compassion yeah. because he remembers we are but dust. Oh, there you go. Absolutely. He sees us as that helpless place, but then he inspires us and goes, by the way, you're so much more. You're so much more than what you see yourself. You're so much more than what the world has told you that you are. Yeah, we're just butt dust or navel, navel lint. No, I think I'm a little better than that. Christ doesn't just die for navel lint. He's all about the inheritance and the saints. He's about all of us. They, their love, man, at the right time right when we need it, right, right when we're all of a sudden awakened to that moment, it's like, oh my gosh. And even when we don't awaken to it, they're not worried about the timing. Wow, that is so good. Wow. All right. So I'm gonna, we're going to come to a landing. Oh, you got something? Oh, Penny. Oh, then Calliope. Go, go ahead. Penny? Yeah. We are the righteousness in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yes, amen. And then pass it to Calliope. There you go. Can you get it there, Calliope? Yes. Okay. So yeah, yeah. When we were talking about the time of awakening, uh -huh. so one of my friends is one of those Christians who doesn't really believe in my gender. Yeah. And doesn't... Okay, so she doesn't think that I can be Christian and non-binary. I know. And a lot of people... I've had that argument hundreds of times. I'm sorry. With some of the kids at school. And I'm like, they need to awaken. Yeah. Yeah. We need to awaken into a different mindset. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably better than Texas, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. Thank you. All right, Jesse, you have anything? I actually was going to share something. When you were Go talking about it. the right time, I yes. kept thinking of all of these. It's sort of the Jack Sparrow stepping off the boat onto the dock. It's uh -huh. like the comic version of it. Yep. But, you know, Christ dying for us yeah. being the ultimate you catastrophe, yeah. right? In the moment when it was all going to go wrong. Yeah. And then it all goes right. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's the ring yeah. being dropped into Mount Doom. It's, yeah. you know, the... Uh, it's the photon torpedoes like reaching the sha like the, the Klingon shaft and the Death Star. It's <laughs> the you know like there's there's so many in different like movies and stories where it's like, yeah, it was all gonna go wrong. Yeah, and that Christ yeah. is the ultimate um, example of it all going wrong and yeah. all going right. That's right. Right in that same moment. Yeah, beautiful Jesse. It's that but Christ moment. All of this over here, but Christ over here. Yes. Go ahead, get a mic. Get a mic. Yeah, you don't get off easy here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got one. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Keith. The death is only, what do I want to say, explained or va validated by the resurrection. Yes. I mean, we can all die. Oh, yeah. But it's, but it's Jesus' resurrection uh -huh. that changes the world. Exactly. That's what makes it. Was that Clampy? That's right. Death is only the next chapter. It's only a veil. What death reveals is where you're already living. It's a shadow. It's a shadow, exactly. Wow, you guys are good. Good. All right. Anybody else? I'm going to hit the, the last button right here. I'm going to just tie this all together so we can eat. So, Patty, if you'd bring up Ephesians 1, we're going to go 3 through 8, and I'll let uh, Marcus read this, and this will be our last little piece. Yes. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. Come on. In love, he <laughs> predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, yes. to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Yes. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. We could be here all the way till Monday night pulling off the matrix off just that little bit. But was there something that sparked you as Marcus read that? Bring us back to the first one, Patty, if you would please. Verse 3. Okay, look at that verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Okay, where's the first shot from that one? Come on, get the mic. Because you got this. I know you do. Come on. He's already given us everything. Uh-huh. Pertaining to life and godliness. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, come on. Where's another one? There's we, another one on this. We are seated in heavenly places. There is is. Nice job, Patty. Oh, my hair's standing up. You guys have got this. What else? Is there one more? If not, I'll go to the next little piece. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Now, we know that scripture we already had, that we, he was crucified before the foundations. So see how this is all tying together? Okay. That we would be holy and blameless before him. Be ye holy as I am holy is a declaration that was set before the foundation of the world, before the fall, that that was the determination that God has for you. See how that one shot off? That was like a falling star. Okay? All right. In love, he predestined us to adoptions of his sons. So there's that love again. For God so loved... It's his love. It's their style of love, not our twisted up, tainted version. Okay? It's his love, their love. He predestined us. In other words, it's like, it's done. Jesus, crucified before the foundation of the world, is determined. We were predestined. It was something that was said, done, and if you needed to use the phrase carved in stone, but it was put into the very hands and side of Christ, it's a done that we would be what? Holy. Holy and blameless. Man, would you please, church that's outside these four walls, stop trying to sell those things at the table in the temple that they have to buy their way into being holy and blameless because it was done by them and you, you have no ability to resale that. And cheapen. Marcus, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm going? No, I was just waiting for you to... Okay, I'm done. Go for it. This is so fun. <laughs> Deep breath. God chose uh -huh. us. Yes. So we got told God loves us, but so many of us never got told God likes you. Yeah. He likes you so much yeah. that he chose you, 
before the foundation of the world, knowing who you were going to be, knowing what you were going to do, and knowing how you were going to reject him anyway mm -hmm. until you came into relationship, and still God chose yes. me. Hallelujah. Man, does that take a load off your shoulders? Does that change how you see life? This is the goodness of God. It's their love. It was predetermined. There is no changing this. No changes. All right. He predestined us to be adopted as sons. Da ding Aha! Through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. What is his will? His kind intention that none should perish. Bam! Right back to John 3.16. Can you see how this living matrix of the living word works? Man, you step into this and the Holy Spirit's going, by the way, by the way, by the way. Bam, bam, bam. Everything starts lining up. I just get my hair stands on end. This is so exciting. This is the hope that I carry. Marcus, go for it. I remember a <laughs> song. I think it was back in the 90s. came out by Don Francisco. Oh. And his lyrics yes. were something to the... Uh, Lines of love is not a feeling, it's an act of the will. Yeah. Uh -huh. According to the kind intention of his, that's God's yes. will. Yeah. God wills to love us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, this is, what do you think of this kind of service? I like this. I like watching you guys all catch the spark. This is good. All right, his kind intention of his will that none should perish to the praise of the glory of his grace. Wow, this is their grace and glory. And what did Jesus say in John 17? That the glory that is with, between us is now in them. We are in the same glory. It's still flowing. It's alive. It's a, it's a force that is it's a part of them. This is that grace which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. See, there we are back in the seated in heavenly places, in the beloved, in that grace that the glory shines through us from that place into this reality. Okay? In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, because why? We were helpless and we were sinners. And we didn't know any better. We, did, we couldn't fix ourselves. We had this cancer. According to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us, lavished man i'll tell you lavished I, how i look at lavished is it's just like smearing it's like the anointing it just smears us marcus go ahead and when we talk about grace uh-huh oftentimes we don't flesh it out adequately yes but remember god's grace is the pleasure of God that empowers us yes. and enables us yes. to be who he created us to be. Right. And he pours that out on us mm -hmm. so that we are coded with that, <laughs> yes. filled to overflowing, yep. and able to share that on to others Absolutely. without feeling any lack. That's right. Or loss. Because it's a grace that is unending. The more we give, the more it's there. It is so much better than loaves and fishes. It is like the rivers of living water that are constantly flowing out of, the, out of the throne, which is inside of us, the enthronement. In all wisdom and insight, all of this was done as they contemplated the creation. It was a set, done deal from the very beginning. Their will, their desire was not going to be stopped or deflected. This isn't, Christ was not plan B. It was the alpha A from the beginning so that it would be the end as well. It was a done deal. When he said it is finished, that was the end. He brought it all and he tied it all together in this beautiful experience of being seated with them. They made a place for us all to sit. And now we are in this beautiful reality of, the, of Christ Jesus. Keith, go ahead. God's wisdom. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> foolishness to the Greek, blasphemous to the Jew. Yeah. Yep. And it makes no sense to those that don't see it. We speak a language they can't see sometimes. But you know what? What did Jesus do to the blind? He healed them. So, you guys did great. I'm proud of you. You, you tapped in. You opened up and listened. What more would I ask Papa and Jesus, Holy Spirit, to do is to bring you into a place of this. This is what life is. This is what a church, I believe, really should function like. Pulling and drawing life from each other and encouragement. You guys are amazing. And I'm so proud to be standing amongst you. So, Papa, I thank you for today. Holy Spirit, you are so cool. I love watching the lights go on as you prompted and reminded us of what Jesus said because he's the living word and he's always speaking. And Papa, we bless you that you are in us and we are in you and that glory is always flowing, always experiencing. You're so good to us. And Jesus, oh my gracious, what a beautiful experience of knowing you and being wrapped up in you. And I bless you. I bless you, Papa. I bless you, Jesus. And I bless you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being here and that we were awakened as a body, corporately, drawing from the reality of Christ, the living word today. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, guys. You're amazing. So, Father, thank you for the food and fellowship. Bless the house as you always do. We bless you back. Amen. Let's eat. <laughs> food!